Hey, it is a pleasure and honor to see you guys in God's house this morning. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that are out there. I know we'll have a little celebration here in a moment, but I wanted to start by saying that. Um, I wanted to encourage you guys this morning, just as we open up the service, uh, with a verse from Proverbs. Um, and it is in Proverbs chapter 31, verses 28 through 29. It says, Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. And you know, hopefully you guys feel that way about your mother, um, your wife today. Uh, I know Gracie, um, it's her second time, uh, second Mother's Day, which is really special for us. It's pretty amazing to think about. Um, but the way she pours into Anna Lee, the way she um, teaches her uh, God's Word, even at an early age like that, the way she prays for her, uh, it, it means a lot and it goes a long way. And I know that Anna Lee will be blessed by that. Uh, as she continues to grow up as well. Uh, my mom, uh, growing up, was really good about that. Uh, she poured into me constantly throughout my life. Uh, I was in church pretty much every time the doors were open. Um, more than just being in church, though, outside of church at the home, we would talk about Bible stories. We would talk about spiritual things going on in the world. We would talk about the way Jesus wants us to live. We prayed all the time. And those kind of lessons, those conversations I had with my mom growing up, especially as I got older into high school and was really going through some things, uh, were inspirational and, and, and very impactful in making me the man that I am today. Um, and they were very encouraging about me going into ministry. And that's huge because when you go into ministry, it can be challenging. It can be tough sometimes. And uh, my mom's always been a really great support system as well as Gracie. And what I want to encourage you guys with this morning um, it's, this, it's this verse in Deuteronomy here as well. It's in Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 7. And it says, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit at your house. And when you walk, and, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. Basically what that verse in Deuteronomy is saying is that as a parent, your highest calling on earth, besides sharing the gospel, is truly being a parent. Um, a lot of times in our society today, we don't see parenthood um, or motherhood or fatherhood as as high of a calling as it should be, but it really is the highest calling that you have. If God's blessed you with a child, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And it's something we shouldn't take lightly. A lot of times in America, as busy as our world is today, we get distracted by jobs and hobbies and other things that really aren't that important. What you do with your children, how you pour into them, how you pray for them, how you disciple them, um, will, will change their entire life in a lot of ways. Um, the person that you want your kid to be when they get older, it really starts with you being the main disciple of your child at home. Uh, the, the, the other thing I see a lot is a lot of children coming to, a lot of parents bring their children to church, and they expect the church to kind of be the ones to train up and to lead their child in the right way, and the church will certainly do that, but you're the main disciple of your child if you're a parent. You're the one that God's entrusted with that responsibility. And you may think, well, I'm not equipped to do that. Well, God doesn't always call the ones that are most equipped. He equips the call. And if you trust in God, if you lean into him, he's going to show you what to do. He's going to show you what to say in those tough conversations, those tough moments with your child. He's going to show you how to pray for them. And even if they go away for a time, then if you trust in God and keep praying for them, keep pouring out to them, keep loving them, I, I have faith and confidence in God that they will return uh, and you'll have a big part in that. And that's a real blessing. So thank you, mothers, for all you do. Thank you for all the love you pour out to your children. Thank you for all your support and your prayers. It doesn't go unnoticed. And if you have teenagers right now that may not tell you they love you all the time uh, because they're teenagers, uh, when they get uh, my age and they get a little bit older, uh, they're going to appreciate the lessons that they were taught uh, because it will change their life forever. So let me pray for us. Lord, thank you so much just for the wonderful mothers that we have in this church and just the wonderful mothers that we have in society. Lord, I ask that we see motherhood and fatherhood as the highest callings that you've given us. It is a true blessing to be able to raise a child. Uh, and Lord, I just pray that for all the mothers in this room today, that they understand the value that they have, the wonderful blessing they are to us, uh, and that what they do doesn't go unnoticed, God. And so just put a special blessing on them this morning. In your name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Brother Bradley. This morning, I'm pleased to uh, lead us in worship this morning. Let's all stand. We're going to have our fellowship hymn first, and uh, we'll greet one another, and we'll come back together and continue. Uh, Rodney is out uh, today celebrating a weekend with his family uh, with a wedding, and uh, I don't know if you heard, but they have some cleanup. They had some storm damage, so uh, may re you might want to reach out to them this week and see if they need anything, but... Uh, we're thankful that uh, they minister here, he and Jennifer minister here with us, but they're not able to be here with us. Let's sing this morning our opening hymn, Count Your Many Blessings. When upon life's pillows you are tempest-sauced, when you are discouraged, all is lost. Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings and see what God has done. Amen. Greet your neighbor this morning. your blessings was chosen because we're celebrating Mother's Day and uh, I think uh, we can all thank our mothers so much for all that they have done for us first of all giving us life itself and then uh, all the things that they did and said to encourage us over the years so I want to dedicate 
this little special song to my mom, who I'm blessed to have with us this morning, Miss Loretta. So thank you, Mom, for all that you've done and continue to do. The song is called Just Simply... Midnight Oil. Mama always got up early And she never went to bed too late Yet I never heard her complaining about her family of age. There were times she should have been sleeping, but late in the midnight hour, she'd get down on her knees and you could hear her say, Lord, fill them with your power. Mama liked to burn the midnight oil down on her knees in prayer. If you asked her why she did it, she said she did it cause she cared. Mama knew that Jesus was waiting when she knelt by her rocking chair. Oh, I'm glad my mama was willing to burn that midnight oil in prayer. This may be some of you. Now my mama's gone to be with Jesus. I've got a family of my own. Yet whenever the clock strikes midnight, you will find me all alone. That's when I start to call upon Jesus for His wisdom and His power. Cause it seems He loves to hear a daddy's prayer even in the midnight hour. Mama liked to burn the midnight oil down on her knees in prayer. If you asked her why she did it, she said she did it because she cared. Mama knew that Jesus was waiting when she knelt by that rocking chair. Oh, I'm so glad. Mama was willing to burn the midnight oil in prayer. Oh, years from now when my grown little boy has a family of his own, will he kneel down and pray when the hour is late and pass a legacy home? Mama liked to burn the midnight oil down on her knees in prayer. If you asked her why she did it, she'd say she did it cause she cared. Oh, Mama knew that Jesus was always waiting when she knelt by her rocking chair. Oh, I'm glad my mama was willing to burn the midnight oil Ooh, in prayer. Now there's a daddy who's willing to burn the midnight oil in prayer. Amen. 
Thank God for mothers. Amen. for the song and thank you Dennis for the video today what a wonderful reminder to us now there are some of you uh, sitting on the back row that are in your teenage years that may be thinking that uh, your mother's love runs out I'm just here to tell you her, your mother's love doesn't run out and it doesn't run from you but there may be times when she has to hide from you because of the great pain that your actions have brought to her. So we need to be careful about these things as we remember them today. We want to honor our mothers uh, this morning, and I think Becky takes the uh, prize for packing the pew today. 
Uh, so that's a good thing, and uh, congratulations. Uh, but to all of the ladies here, we want to say thank you for what you do and how you contribute to our lives. Such a wonderful blessing. And a reminder to us that these are the blessings from heaven that sometimes we overlook, sometimes we take for granted. And uh, that is a major mistake in our lives when we do that. But I'm grateful today that we have just a few moments to be able to say thank you to all of the ladies in the room for all of the contributions that you make to our lives. And we thank you for that. And we're grateful for the opportunity to say thank you today. Mother's Day can bring a mix of emotions for many women. There are those anticipating the birth of their first child, stepmoms wondering what their place is, those who have lost their mother and are faced with grieving on Mother's Day, and moms who encounter feelings of hurt because their children have turned away from them or turned away from God, and those overwhelmed with the pain from the loss of a child. God has given us mothers to carry, raise, teach, and mold us into godly people. Of course, no mother is perfect except yours. And not everyone grows up with a perfect, loving mother. But every mother out there, from the one who feels she was born to be a mom to the one who struggles with that title, deserves honor and praise for the role God has given them. A role that reflects God's love in a deeply profound way toward each of us. God is the source of all love and blessing. We should all be grateful for the gift he has given us as we continue, as he continues to shape our mothers in his image of compassion and unconditional love. So today, we pause to honor the women in our lives who are heaven's blessings. We say thank you to all the women who have invested in our lives with a woman's touch. And we say to you, God bless you and thank you. So ladies, we're here to say thank you for what you do. Let's thank these ladies today. Let's pause a moment now and pray God's blessing over each of these women. Heavenly Father, we come to say thank you for the gift of motherhood. We celebrate today the loving sacrifice of biological and spiritual mothers who have been given to nurture and guide us in the ways that you have set before them. We pray, Father, that you would bless them with joy and strength, that your love would continue to grow within them as they give themselves to selfless devotion. May they feel deeply appreciated and honored today by us and on every day. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would fill their hearts with laughter and joy, that you would surround them with love from family and friends, that you would grant, grant them health, peace, and fulfillment as they pursue their calling. Father, Remind us today how important it is for us to let them know that they are valued to us and worthy in your eyes of our thanks and your praise. Now, Father, hear our prayer for our mothers who oftentimes face hardships and trials. Whether they deal with health issues or financial stress or relational struggles, Father, they continue to be a rock and a fortress for each of us. May you provide them with your protection as they walk in your provision. May your presence be a comforting reminder that they are not alone in the journey that is theirs. And now, Heavenly Father, we lift our mothers to you and ask that you would grant them strength to face their daily challenges with the courage and the wisdom that you provide as they guide children toward a life of faith and service. May they be encouraged when they are weary. May they be inspired when they feel overwhelmed. 
And Father, most of all, we ask that you would bless them with your peace, with your love, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much for all that you give to us and you continue to share with us. Brother Chris. As we continue in worship, let's all stand as we sing, Love Lifted Me. Let's all stand and we'll sing all three verses this morning. Solid Rock.
seated. Thank you very much. Wonderful singing this morning as we uh, ask the Lord's blessing and as we seek to bless him with our worship today. Turn with me this morning to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. We have one verse we're going to try and focus on this morning, and that is verse 5. As we speak about the power of a mother's influence in our lives. Hear the word of the Lord today that is inspired by the Holy Spirit through Paul the Apostle. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Heavenly Father, honor the reading of your word today. Bless it to each of us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mother's Day is one of those days that can uh, be a blessing to us and to can allow us to be blessed and to uh, give a blessing. Uh, Mother's Day can also be a great challenge to us. As one husband found out, as he wrote this poem with the gift that he gave his wife. M is for the mink coat that you want. O is for the opal ring you crave. T is for the tiny sports car you'd love. H is for the hat that makes you rave. E is for the earrings you admire. R is for the rug on which you tread. Put them all together, they spell bankrupt. So I'm giving you this handkerchief instead. Now, I'm not quite sure what that got for him. <laughs> I'm not sure if the handkerchief or a vacuum cleaner would have been more uh, inappropriate in that moment. <laughs> but where do we get this idea of Mother's Day? Well, the first or one of the earliest recollections that we know about Mother's Day actually came as a result of a practice in churches back in England and in parts of Europe. It was called Mother Mothering Sunday, and it was really related to people in a community returning to the church where they grew up or the most influential church in their lives. And so it was called Returning to the Mother Church. But we really don't have a lot of information about celebrating Mother's Day or any uh, historical uh, accounting of Mother's Day in this country until a woman by the name of Anna Jarvis decided that there needed to be a day where churches honored the mothers of the children. Anna had no children of her own but she felt it was important to acknowledge the contributions and the influence of mothers upon their children. And her intention was that it would be a day when children would come together and would pay honor and tribute to their mothers in a very personal way. There was nothing associated with the commercialization of Mother's Day that we see today with flowers or cards or things of that nature, Anna Jarvis thought that it would be most appropriate that either in the church context or in the home context that children would take the moment to pull aside their mother and to love them and to honor them by letting them know how much they appreciated all that they do for them. She started this campaign in 1908. She got more traction in 1912 as she started to write newspapers and encourage churches, and churches got behind this movement. But it was not until 1914 when President Woodrow Wilson signed a proclamation making May, the second Sunday of May officially in America Mother's Day. And therefore, we have been celebrating uh, some 110 years now, Mother's Day on the second Sunday of May. And you know, in the church life, Mother's Day has a great influence on us because the only other Sunday where we have more people in church is on Easter. Because a lot of folks want to make mama happy 
as sitting by her side as some of you are doing today. And we thank you for that. And we're grateful to have that opportunity. But the influence of mothers. Do we have any, any examples of people who were influenced by their mothers? Well, Mark Twain said this, my mother had a great deal of trouble with me, but I think she enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. Abraham Lincoln said, all that I am or hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. I remember my mother's prayer. They, prayers, they were always, they always followed me. They have clung to me all of my life. No one is poor who has a godly mother. Chuck Swindoll says, as far back as I can remember, my mother would have me down on, the, on my knees by the bed at night praying. I can still hear her voice calling my name to God and telling him she wanted me to follow him in whatever he called me to do. Billy Graham said, only God himself fully appreciates the influence of a Christian mother in the molding of character in her children. A mother's influence on her children's lives cannot be measured. They know and absorb her example and attitudes regarding honesty, temperance, kindness, and industry. Influence. A mother's influence. So important. Paul acknowledges that as he writes to his, what he referred to as his son in the ministry and encourages him during a difficult time. And as he encourages him, he speaks about the influence of the women in Timothy's life. Those who had instilled in him an understanding of who God is and what true faith sincere genuine faith is to look like and what Paul was really saying is that it was his grandmother and his mother that modeled for him a genuine faith that would lead him to come to a place where he for himself would decide to follow Christ as a result of hearing the gospel but as Chris said just before he sang this morning, it is at the feet of our mothers where we learn what it means to know who Christ is. I can tell you for a fact that in my life, it, were, it was the women, my mother, and Sunday school teachers from the time I was young, very young, instilling in me the understanding of who Jesus Christ is that would ultimately lead to me understanding not only that God had chosen to use me in whatever field it would be, but eventually would lead me to understand the importance of hearing His calling and surrendering to His calling in my life. You too have a testimony of how God has ministered to you and how God has continued to influence your life as a result of your mother. Now I recognize the fact that not all mothers find themselves following exactly in the footsteps of Jesus. There are times when they too take a detour. There are times too when they become overwhelmed with the responsibilities of motherhood. And sometimes they step outside of that extended grace and mercy and kindness. But the reality is our mothers, our mothers love us more than anyone other than God himself. And they will be the influence and continue to be the influence that will lead us to a place that says to us that when we cannot hold on to ourselves, God is holding on to us. And if they are honest with us, and if they have a faith that is filled with integrity, they will allow us to see those moments when there is a chink in the armor, those moments when they fail to do and to be all that they long to be in Christ. The fact of the matter is none of us are perfect and all of us have those moments when we wish we could go back and hit the do-over button. 
that's not possible. But we do know that it is the great influence of those that are a part of our lives, especially early in our lives, and those, those formative years that make all the difference. And so as Paul speaks about and as he honors the influence of Timothy's grandmother and his mother and their lives, there are three things that he wants us to see about them. First of all, he wants us to understand that Timothy's faith is a genuine, it is a sincere faith. The word here in the Greek is a word that begins with a negative prefix. And the second half of that word is the word that we get our word hypocrite from. So as Paul talks about Timothy's faith, what he's saying to us is, what we know about your faith, Timothy, is that you are not a hypocrite in your faith. You are someone who is sincere. It doesn't have cracks in it. It doesn't mean that, does, Paul never meant to say that Timothy was perfect, but what he said was his faith was genuine, it was complete, it was sincere. It didn't have cracks in it. There was no wax over him covering the cracks in his faith. His faith was true. His faith was something that was sincere. And can I say to all of us today that in our homes, in our churches, and in our country, there's never been a time when a sincere faith has been needed more than today. There's so much brokenness, so much heartache, so much brokenness in our homes, so much heartache in our homes. There's so much heartache and brokenness in our churches. There's so much heartache and brokenness in our country, in our world today. What we really need is a sincere faith, a faith that says we're not perfect, but we are following and we seek to follow a perfect Savior. And we are learning. And we're praying as the song that we taught children years ago to sing is, He's still working on me. We need to be singing that. We need to be praying that. We need to be acknowledging that God is still working on us. And He's taking us to where He wants us to go as He leads us in paths of righteousness for His namesake. What we need in our country today is a sincere faith. A faith that people see, a, pay, a faith that people can trust, a faith that allows them to understand the importance of trusting God when we cannot trust anyone else. The fact of the matter is, we're trying to answer all of the questions that lead to the problems of this world with answers that the world just cannot satisfy. Your heartache, your brokenness, your discouragement, your despair is not going to be answered with a simple solution. You need peace down deep in your soul, and that peace can only come through faith in Christ Jesus. The answers to the brokenness is to the one who is able to see and to know and to hold our brokenness in his hand. And the scripture says he is able to mend our broken hearts. He is able to renew us who are crushed in spirit. And we pray that God will continue to show us how we as the people of God have been influenced by our mothers and our grandmothers and their prayers. And we can see how important it is to have a sincere faith. I never knew this, but my mother's mom wanted one of her sons. She had six sons and then my mother, seven kids. My mother was the last of seven. She had six older brothers. Can you imagine growing up in that house? And she obviously got special treatment uh, as being the last and the only girl. So there you go. But long after I had, my, 
My mother's mother passed away when I was 16 years of age. But my Grammy, my grandmother, we called Granny, always wanted to make certain that we were in church. And long after I had been preaching and being a pastor, serving as a pastor, my mother said to me one day, did you ever know that your granny prayed her entire life that one of her boys would be a preacher? I said, no. And quite honestly, I can't imagine any of her six boys being a preacher. <laughs> they were my uncles, I knew them, and we had a laugh about that. But here's what I'm saying. It was the influence that my granny had in her prayers with the midnight oil that ultimately led, I know, because I'm telling you, and I've told you this before, I had absolutely zero interest in being a preacher. In fact, I made this statement, I will never be a preacher. Some of you are questioning whether that's true today. I get it. But I can tell you without reservation that it was the influence of my grandmother and her prayers that would ultimately lead to the change in my heart that would lead me to surrender, to follow Christ in a deeper way as I surrendered to walk in his chosen path for me in ministry. I don't know what your grandmother or your mother has been praying for you, but you should know and you should respect the fact that if your faith is going to be sincere, it's going to come as a result of the prayers that have been given and continue to be given from your mother or your grandmother's heart. That doesn't mean that you have to become a preacher to honor your, your grandmother or your mother's prayers, but it does mean that you will become someone who is seen and is recognized as having a sincere faith, a faith that trusts the Lord, a faith that reminds you that he's holding on to you, that he has you in his sights, that you are living under the shadow of his wings. Sincere faith. Trusting that in the midst of all that he's given to you, the responsibility that he's entrusted to you, whether that's having your own children or whether that's uh, working to encourage and to influence others to find Christ as their Lord and Savior, he wants it to be a sincere faith, a faith that is true. And when people see you, they know that you have been with Christ and that while you are not perfect, you are seeking to walk in his path of righteousness. So it's a sincere faith that comes as a result of a mother and grandmother's influence. But secondly, we see that there is a spiritual heritage that is given. Paul says, I know of your sincere faith that first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and then in your mother Eunice. We spend a lot of time speaking about legacy. I'm here to tell you that a legacy is all about you. It's all about what people will remember about you. A legacy is going to pass. But a heritage is always about the one who has guided and directed you and led you to a place of understanding the calling and the purpose of your life. And so what Paul was speaking to Timothy about is his heritage, not his legacy. The fact of the matter is we don't know a whole lot about Timothy and what happened to him. We don't know so much about his legacy, but we know a great deal about his heritage because it began with his grandmother Lois. It came down to him through his mother Eunice. And what we know is that when Paul came into their town and preached the gospel, Timothy said yes. And as a result of that, he would spend the rest of his life not only assisting Paul in the gospel ministry, but he would also lay a foundation and build upon that heritage that was first seen in his grandmother, Lois. I wonder today what 
heritage you're building on? Is your heritage one of faith and one that is a sincere faith? One that says, God has a purpose, a plan, a calling upon my life? Paul said, I am persuaded that the same faith that was in your grandmother is in you. That word there is in the perfect tense, and what he's saying is, I'm absolutely confident that your faith is not only sincere, not only genuine, but it is the real deal, and it is impacting the lives of other people. Can I say to all of us today that one of the other great needs in our nation, in our homes, in our churches, is for people to be persuaded that our faith is real? It's real. We're not playing games. We're not here trying to build a name for ourselves. We're here wanting to lift up and to honor the name of Jesus Christ. Right? That's our heritage. That's our heritage. We like to speak about our American heritage. Let me just tell you, our American heritage right now is so scattered and so diverse, it's hard for us to be able to pinpoint it. But I'm going to tell you without any question, without any, without any reservation today, my heritage in Christ, it's solid. Right? There is no diversity in that. There is no question about that. And what we need to be is we need to be people that live our lives in such a way that the folks that see us living our lives are persuaded like Paul was that the faith that is in us is a sincere faith. We don't need to go about persuading people to believe in Christ. We simply need to persuade them with the way that we live and the way that we love and the way that we care for them that Christ is in us. And that's our heritage. That's what we need to be living. That's the influence of a mother that makes all the sacrifices necessary to see that you have what you need and to allow you to do the things that you long to do. Selfless, giving, caring. Are we living like that? Do people see, are they persuaded by the way that we love and that we care and have compassion and concern for them? Do they see that in us? You see, it's not about us persuading anyone to become a Christian because only Christ through the Holy Spirit can persuade someone to believe. But we are responsible to allow the Holy Spirit to lead and to live in us in such a mighty way that everyone will be persuaded that we have been with Jesus and we are seeking to follow Jesus in his footsteps. That's what Paul is talking about. The influence that I see, that which has come down, that which is your heritage, is a strong heritage that began with your grandmother who trusted and believed the God of creation. She passed it on to your mother, and now both of them have passed it on to you. And I am persuaded that that faith that was a true faith that lived in them now is a true faith alive in you. Do we have that kind of heritage? Are we passing that heritage on to our children? So vitally important in this day in which we live. How important is it to us, to you? You know what's interesting to me about all of this and what Paul has to say about these two women and their influence over their son Timothy? is the fact that they lived in a male-dominated society. They lived in a society where women were basically seen as being in the background. But these two women are like many other women in the Bible. And that is, they are separated. They are set apart by God to be called out and to be recognized for their contribution to the faith to the calling of God. It's interesting how many people want to say that, that the Bible puts women in their place. Yes, it does. It puts them in a prominent place, a place of being an example of what it means to know God 
to love God and to follow God. And whether you look in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, I'm here to tell you that in the midst of a male-dominated society, Jesus Christ and the Lord God Almighty raised women up and put them in places of influence so that their lives and their testimonies continue to this day thousands of years after they lived on earth. Why? Because God is not interested in whether you're male or female, Greek or Jew. He's interested in knowing in what is in your heart. Is it in your heart to live for him, to love him, and to care for him? God used women in positions that no one ever expected. For heaven's sakes, Esther became the savior of an entire people because she was willing to be used of God. Deborah stood up and became a judge when no man would stand up and speak for God. Rahab, God elevated her. She's listed in the lineage of Jesus, for heaven's sakes. Mary, the mother of Jesus. What influence did she have on him in those formative years? Mary Magdalene, a woman that most people would say should have been forgotten, never remembered in history. And yet, if the gospel is correct, and I believe it is, she's the first one to know that Jesus had been raised from the dead. The first one to tell it. So don't tell me that women haven't played a major role in God sharing his love and his care and his compassion to the world. Women, ladies, stand up. And take your rightful place as one who is given the responsibility of influencing not just those in your home, but the people that God has brought into your life and allowed you to connect with. Don't sell yourself short. God has a calling on your life. God has a place for you. God has an opportunity for you. And he wants you to take that opportunity that he's entrusted to you and use it for his honor and for his glory. And folks, today is the day for us, all of us, to begin to give grateful thanks for the contribution and the influence of the women that God has placed in our lives. And we give him the glory for it. Amen? Heavenly Father, thank you for your gifts, so many gifts. But today we remember the gift of the women who have played such a significant role in each of our lives. Those who gave us birth, those who nurtured us in those formative years, those who guided our faith journey, those who have continued to support us and to stand beside us and to stand behind us. We thank you, Father. And Father, where we have failed to acknowledge them and where we have failed to honor them, we ask for your forgiveness. Because for many of us today, we can honestly say that our faith is the direct result of the influence of those women that you have placed in our lives and over our lives. Father, we thank you today that you have given us this opportunity to say thank you. We thank you first, and we thank those that you have given to look over us, to care for us, and to minister to us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be here today and it's possible that you want to step forward and come to this altar and simply kneel and pray, thanking God for the mother and the women that are in your life. Maybe your, your spouse, your wife today. 
maybe your daughters today, you want to come and kneel here and to pray for them, that God will protect them, that God will continue to mold them in His purpose and in His calling for their lives. Maybe today you have recognized the fact of God's blessing in your life, and for the first time you want to acknowledge that by stepping forth and saying, I have never said yes to Jesus' invitation to be saved. And today, I want to place my life in His hands as I surrender all to Him. To honor Him and to honor the mother, the grandmother, and others that have prayed for me, today you step forward. As Brother Chris leads us, I'll step to the floor and we will receive you today as Jesus opens His arms to receive you into His family this day. Let's stand together and we'll sing. attention uh, to the announcements that are in the bulletin that you received today. Mostly I want to remind you of the Mother's Day luncheon that is next Saturday here at the church. If you've not signed up, you'll want to sign up and uh, you'll need to do that by Wednesday. We need to have an account, uh, account of how many are coming. And if you'd like to sponsor a table or if you want to decorate a table, please see Gracie before you leave today. And uh, we look forward to having that time with you from 11 until 1 on Saturday. And then next Sunday is our graduation recognition day. We have some folks in our fellowship that are graduating either from high school or from college, and we're going to recognize them. Brother Bradley is going to be preaching next Sunday morning as we do that, so we're looking forward to that day. And next Sunday, we begin to pray for Vacation Bible School across the country as Vacation Bible School will begin shortly in places around America, that it's a day of national prayer for Vacation Bible School and the impact that Bible School has on the lives of children and eventually lives of family. And so we're grateful for that opportunity as well. Also, you'll note that there's an announcement related to a baby shower next Sunday. And so please make note of that. And um, then there are some additional announcements that are coming up in June. Please make note of those also and mark your calendars for them. At this time, I'd like to ask our men uh, who are going to receive the offering this morning uh, to make their way to the front, and we will receive our tithes and offerings this morning.
die. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as you have blessed us with the gifts of life, we thank you. And now as you've entrusted to us the gifts that support us and are a part of your provision, and as you have asked us to be faithful in returning a portion of that to you, we pray that we have sought and know your leadership as to how we should give and what we should give. And we pray that we will honor you as we continue our worship in these gifts. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand as we go out and close the service out in a good way. Let others see Jesus in you. That's the point, and that's the song as we gather together one last time. Hold hands with the one next to you. If you can grab one, let's sing it. Yeah.